What's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Fanpreneur Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Marcus. And I'm Dr. Tamara Allen. Look, we have an amazing guest here this evening for you guys, and he's going to be giving you guys so much information that you're going to need to have a pen and pad handy. And you're probably going to have to watch this over again because it is going to be fire. You want to know your rights? You want to know about being a foreign? You're going to want to be here today to watch all of this. So, General Hale, it's good to see you today. Nice to be here. We are so grateful to have you. Thank you, thank you. So, General Hale, let me ask you a quick question. What made you decide to take this road to learn about your rights, decide to be a foreign national, and have dual citizenship? What are the benefits of those? I just want to have, you know, better control over my life, you know, uh, in general. You know, when I realized that um, everything we do every day, you know, we go into some sort of contracts every day, all day, all day, every day. We're downloading apps. We're filling out applications. We're just doing all these downloads, downloads, you know, accepting terms and conditions and, you know, of course, not reading them and mm -hmm. signing. And, of course, without reserving rights within the contracts. So that's when I uh, ventured over into uh, areas of law. My first area of law was um, contract law. So I did do not only the private studies, but I also wanted to have a full understanding of the entirety, you know. In order to do that, you got to kind of dip in both sides. So I, I did have certifications at uh, from uh, Yale University as well as Harvard University for wow. contract law. Really? Nice. I don't mention that often, but yeah. <laughs> so that's how I kind of got overall understanding on both sides, on what applies and what doesn't, because I, I did do both sides. That's amazing. So from there, well, first of all, I'm a certification uh, junkie. You know, mm. I have a lot of certifications mm. in many different things. You know, forensic auditing, that's when we was going into that because my intention was to establish a service that would be able to be a defense for, you know, mortgages, student loans, car loans, credit card debt, you name it. Everything is about the contract, but mm -hmm. the forensics of the contract. So, you know, people make those claims and say, you know, the bill has been paid already or they're monetizing the note and blah, 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 blah. Those are just accusations unless you have some type of tangible evidence to prove. And the only way you can really do that if you go into the forensic auditing of the account, which shows where we can show a fully detailed, you know, 30 to 40 page report, you know, showing the Bloomberg screenshots of the actual QCIP that's tied to the actual bond, that's tied mm -hmm. to the promissory note, that's tied to the original application of that particular loan Ooh. that shows, you know, the amount of the original debt and how much they monetized off it, you know. So when you're saying monetized, they've been paid over and over and over again for the same actual loan. Is that mm -hmm. not correct? 100%. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you said something that was pretty important about people downloading apps and not reading it and just saying, oh, I want this. Threads is a new app that has come into play. And what people don't understand is as soon as they download it, because it can't be removed, mm -hmm. is now they're downloading all of their personal information, like their credit score. How do you feel about that? And did you download it? Man, I was a victim. <laughs> look, look, let, let, let me be 100% honest with you. It's like, but me, I've been shadow banned forever. You know, they shut me down. The page I'm on, that's a new page. That's, that page is only like maybe six six months old. Wow. You know Wait, the one that I DM'd you on and everything? Yeah. Oh, so you got a huge following for six months, bro. Six, I started from zero in July. I'm January. And see, I was following the old account because I was wondering why yeah, I didn't they, see you They anymore. deleted my, my Instagram, my Facebook. And, and a Gmail account. Wow. Yeah. They said I'm impersonating myself. Wow. But but yet, every other week, there's a new page being created to me. You know what I'm saying? Who knows what they're doing with it? And they, they're trying to DM all of my followers and stuff like that, you know, for some type of scams. You know, but they're alive and well with their pages. Right. So, they're in cahoots. Yeah, they're they, allowing people yeah, impersonating fa us. Facebook does not provide any form of support or anything. You see what I mean? It just, it was a horrible, horrible experience. Now know? they got support if you got the meta verification. Nah. You don't even got the... No. What? No. Why? That was a part of the presentation yesterday. 
<laughs> about Meta and that what it means to really be verified, the, the blue check. Mm-hmm. So you look up the company that owns the, uh, that's the blue check company. So you're dealing with the KYC to know your yep. customer. Right, the verification they have, stuff. They have an algorithm on live. So if you live and you just say something that goes against, you know, their algorithm, what they want you to be speaking on, they can automatically convert that into like a FaceTime monitoring feature where mm-hmm. now they can, it's a whole nother type of fraud detection now. Now they're kind of looping you into a whole nother realm in the algorithm. Wow. Uh, and then... Put it like this. You, we got to remember that what they're doing now is trying to find ways to get us to help them digitize us. Right. right so right, so right. When, when you first sign up for the blue check it's going to say uh, one of the conveniences is let your followers know that it's the real you. Right. Right. What is that really saying? That's saying that now this person, this image that's on this phone is you, not you no more. Mm-hmm. This is the real you just confirmed and verified that this is the real you. The social media itself. Yeah. So now anything you say and do, you know, with this digital image of, of self, you know, you could be, you know, of course, liable for. But that's not the biggest thing is that now it goes back into the aspect and the purpose of mm-hmm. identity creation and identity control because they still have a multitude of different validation systems that they send through. So Meta and the Blue Check service provider, they're connecting, you know, their systems with, like I said, the KYC. They're referencing things from the credit bureaus, certain public records, mm-hmm. your emails, your phone numbers, all these, it's a multitude, your facial recognition. They have all type of, I can't even halfway even, I have to do a whole nother segment on the blue check. That's how serious Interesting. It is. You don't do the facial recognition on your phone? Uh, hell no. So there is like a people that are like, they're not on social media. They don't believe in social media. Mm-hmm. They don't believe in anything revolving around the digital age. And so they're what they would call like, what is it, a black site? Like they're just not online. They're just in a cave, I guess you could say. Like, would you condone that? It's all about knowing how to navigate the web. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you have to use protection. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You have to navigate the web. Right. You know, because if you don't know how to navigate the web, what happens is you become caught on the web and then you become what? Prey of the predator. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we got to be able to loop in and loop out. You know, so that's why, you know, even this month, I got to find some time to release these. So we're going to have different membership cards, you know, for the Malachi Empire, because uh, in order to even tap in certain parts of our portals, you have to be protected. So part of that protection is going to be our physical digital access cards, which is going to be like ID card, but it's going to flip out a little USB that you plug into your computer. So now when you when you boot up your computer, you're going to hit a hotkey. You can pick which operating system to operate on. So all the private operating systems, not Windows and the, the OSS, you're going, to, you're going to operate on different versions of probably Linux and stuff like that. Wow. So now when you boot in, now you can access the portals. So, gotcha. this, so this is the Underground Railroad or Zion. It's like if I have my card with me right now. You know, and I boot up off one of your computers and go do whatever for hours, for days. Mm -hmm. Once I unplug my key, there's no trace of anything I've done, been to, nothing. It all goes with me. I want that now. Yeah, that's (laughs) because because we got to understand, you know, I got VPN switchers. I'm big in Nebraska here, this, there. But they're still, you know. They're still, they can still track you if they wanted to. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah, you know, because now when it gets down, when it boils down to full privacy, remember, privacy is everything. Mm -hmm. It's still about tracking and identifying, right? Right. So so now it's always some numbers, some traces of numbers that lead back to a person or, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or location, you see Mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that IP address, you see, all right, say if we got the VPN or whatever, cool. All right. But, all right. I'm still on my computer, right? Mm-hmm. My home computer that still ta- originally tagged this original IP address. Mm-hmm. I pick a browser to access this web now, you know, Tor browser. But if you're going to do, do at least do Brave or, you know, uh, maybe even Torch or something like that. Right. So we go, the websites, how they're built right now, and because of appliance and stuff like that, they're now obligated to give the disclaimers on, you know, I, I'll accept these cookies and stuff like that. You know, right. the mess you got to accept now. Back in the day, you, you know, but people still don't even know what the heck, you know what I'm saying? They still, oh, yeah, I accept. You know what I'm saying? Imagine Chip Ahoy's, right? <laughs> you know, you take a bag of cookies. What happens when you crush them? They Cr- crumble. So you got crumbs all over the place. Mm-hmm. So the crumbs are symbolic for traces of information and data. Wow. Right? Right. I get so, that. So that's why when we're browsing, doing this and doing that, 
or you go to your Facebook page, and all of a sudden, oh, there go that camera I was looking for. It's popping up as an ad. There goes this I was looking for. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because the collection of data is being monitored, stored, collected, and most importantly, shared. You see what I mean? Right. Your cookies, the cache, all this. So the browser. So now, you know, the prey is now the browser. Mm -hmm. The browser is now, you know, utilizing your access to this particular access point of this particular website to still extract your information. You gotcha. see what I mean? Okay. The VPN changer still is not doing any justice on your privacy. Because you still have ultimately. cookies and cash yes. that is attached and to it. And it's all the, the invisible information that's actually downloading off of these different access points called websites that's still latching onto your computer. That's why slowly but surely, if you're operating off of you know, anything, especially a, a Windows operating system, you know, you're going to slowly but surely be starting to attract the malware and viruses and stuff like that. So now we get into so that. Okay, well, if I get Norton, we'll be good. If we get McAfee, we'll be good. Uh, no. So there's a whole other matrix because Norton and McAfee is one of the biggest known predators. They're the ones that release a lot of the, oh. <laughs> the tyrants on the system. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you ever had, had it on your system, first of all, they're horrible anyway. But if you ever had it on your system, your system might be operating good. If you ever let your subscription lapse, they release all the tyrants. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And the owner of that, you know, who just recently killed himself. You oh, know? It, oh, it's a serious story about the owner. Yeah, he's yeah. now. I remember, I remember him being on when we were talking to him. He was literally inside of a box. When mm -hmm. I say of a box, it had aluminum all around him because he didn't want them to track him. That was an indication right there. Like, he's like, they can't find me. You know, I'm inside. You can't trace me. But let me tell you about this. I mean, it was mind blowing to see nothing but aluminum foil all over. It wasn't aluminum foil, but it, it looked like aluminum foil. Mm. And what it was, it was to block any signals mm. so they couldn't trace where he was. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And that was an indication like everything we're doing. So another thing, it's funny because we had to go on the IRS.gov site. Mm -hmm. And now it's called Identity IQ. They want a well, facial well, no, ID.me. ID okay, yeah, ID. Yeah. I was, <laughs> oh, yeah, the verification yeah, thing. ID. Yeah. They got that for. Same thing. Yes, yeah. for folks who have unemployed, you're having to scan your face. Yeah. And I'm like, this is an invasion of privacy. Even to get things notarized now, mm -hmm. you got to scan your face now. Mm -hmm. That's if you do the notarize.com. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just like, geez, we are truly in the matrix. See, most of the time, there's always an or. You know, and the or is the private side. You know, what was we doing? Because I, I was taking people through the trademark application uh, yesterday, and uh, they want to do identity verification through the ID.me. Right, system, right, right, right. Or you can mail in your blah, blah, blah to this address. So, of course, we're going to do the or. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, it's all about that mild inconvenience and patience, you know, of just, you know, waiting a couple extra weeks. And, and stuff people like don't that. want the patience, they yeah. want the quickness. But if they're patient, they can stay private. Yeah. So what is your number one thing of how people can become private? I think people just do need to do a complete reset first. You know, like everything. Like sometimes you got to burn down the whole house. You know what I'm saying? Like not literally, but... You know, I was just, about to say, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I know, my eyes are... I was like, wait, 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 wait. Whoever's seen Billions. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I have. not watched it yet. That's my favorite okay. show. Civilians, Succession, Succession. Suits. Like, they got subliminal messages in these shows, Those man. Are, anybody that comes to, like, you know, to, to work with me or whatever, like, uh, behind the scenes, like, part of my internal affairs team, they have the, that's part of their homework assignments. To watch the shows? Yeah. I think that's a great idea. The whole idea. series? Yeah. Yes. And we got to discuss. Jeez. I guess they got to, you know, because each member of my team, each character, main character inside of these shows identifies a particular member of my team. Mm. Right? So, Black Mirror. Succession, mm -hmm. Suits, and Billions. Especially Billions. I look at it as a high-level business gangster movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, because people, that is so true. People think the war, like, beef is still there. It's different, yeah. though. It's different it's, beef. It's high-level you know, beef now. You got poli the political beef. You got the, the corporate beef. You got all this other beef, you know, and stakes are higher. You're talking, yeah. you're talking yeah. about Billions now. Yeah. Right? Wow. So, you know, what's the name? Kept on, just kept on crying at him. And uh, he thought it was a bug in the office. Yeah, I remember that. Remember the bug? See, I, well, the thing is, we can't say certain things because, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, you remember what he did? Yeah, right? yeah. He, he gutted the, he whole, gutted the place. whole place. He gutted the whole place out. 
Man, you can't, you can't play. I feel like that's what we should do for our stuff. Is just make them watch these certain shows, and it's yeah. mandatory. You know what? I'm down with it. I will watch Billions. I was trying not to get into another show because I don't really be trying to watch it. You know, my thing is power because I feel like it's a subliminal message. That too, and that is so much. I'm like, wow. Okay, the okay. correlations of it, what's transpiring. Power is the elementary version of Billions. Oh, really? Now, yeah, one hundred percent. There's no comparison. Power None. because look. Power is all we had, so we get we navigate to it, right? See, we a lot of people billions go of a lot of people here because it's the other side, right? You know what I'm saying? So we can't be colorblind of that, you know. Like when we talk about you know powerful families, you know melanated powerful families, what did they give us? Power was mm-hmm. the best, almost the best we got, almost. You know, you're uh, right about that. You know, but other than that, we had empire. Oh my! I was God. just about let's, to say let's empire. Not, let's not, but let's not really mention that though. Because that's the insult. Power was consistent. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. It was consistent about everything about how you had asset protection, how everything was in the trust, how everything mm-hmm. was protected. It was just, it was consistent. Mm-hmm. This trust situation that's going on with them, with Malik and what his dad did, he went a whole nother step inside of the trust. But then you have Stern, okay? The white guy that's, you know, that's kind of. Because I'm expecting him to come back in season four because he done lost his trust. So he's, of course, he ain't going to be able to go back to school because they're mm-hmm. about to be in war. But it was just the control aspect if you go back to the original series of power and how he was trying to control Ghost and be like, look, if you, you know, you got to do this and then I'll give you this. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, it's like, I'm definitely going to watch Billions now because yeah. I, I was like, I'm not Billions, watching another show. Blacklist. Blacklist. Oh my God. Raymond Reddy. Yes. I have an alias. Yo, (laughs) I'm not even going to hold you. I've watched Blacklist like five times. The whole thing. Blacklist is crazy. I've only saw some of it. Blacklist is the one with the bald headed guy, right? Yes. Raymond Reddy. Right. That man is the goat. Oh my God. One minute he's a good guy, then he's a bad guy. You don't know which way he is. Nah, he always stand on principle. He was consistent. He always stand on principle. Just don't poach into my business. That's all he cared about. And his, his number one thing was trust. Yep. You know, he was super protected. You cannot, you know, every, and everybody knew the rules. You see what I mean? Okay. Yeah, okay. you got to Nah. Don't. You okay. got to watch that. Lord, yeah. I'm so focused, but okay. Billions, I'm going to start with first. You want to know what Billions okay. first. You want to know why, why I watched Billions originally? And then when I started getting into the asset protection side, why it connected? Because we're traders first. Right. We're so traders. Billions mm-hmm. is all about trading and investing mm-hmm. that's what they kept saying they said mom you've got to watch billions because it's about the trading aspect and i was like nope i don't want to see anything else because to me it's like a waste of time watching tv mm-hmm. and you know they used to call it they what no, no, the no, idiot no. box we gotta know what to, what to tune into you know what i'm saying You're because right. it's a no nah, I, 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 there's certain things are educational has you know that, that's a like okay put it like this billions was so impactful for me that's what triggered me, inspired me to even create Trade Capital. That's where Trade Capital came from. Wow. wow. Axe Capital, Trade Capital. You know what's crazy? I created Vinci Capital because of Billions. Really? Yes. That's why you did that? That's 100% and why. And see, I did mine it. was Mansa. I watched Lisa. Billions and I was like, yo, this man is on a different level. Yes. <laughs> now, mind you, I didn't watch it, but that's why I had created it. It's so because deep. Of the trading part. That was the reason why I had created Mansa Musa, the Mansa Musa mm-hmm. group. Because it was all like, we need to start doing some stuff on a whole nother level. We need to step outside and get this investment. So thinking about that now, of course, the fiat is dead, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you tell people to invest? What should they be doing now with their money? Uh, I mean, converting it over into some type of digital aspect. But I can't even really say that 100% because uh, we just got to understand where the world is going as far as uh, digitally, you know. I think eventually, maybe, possibly, that every family maybe should have their own coin. You You already know. Well, you know that's what we have. We already own it. And guess where I got it from? Where? You. (laughs) (laughs) I saw this man have a coin on YouTube. I said, I went straight to you. I was like, hold up. This man's on a different level. And he was like, Mom, we need to do our coin now. So I designed the coin for It was the podcast where I got it from. Okay. It was a niche... Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What got me was like, I, yeah, we're creating our own language right now. I said, wait, wait, what? Yes. <laughs> I said, hold up. 
Yeah, and I thought we, bro. I think we're we were we're pretty deep into it. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you were like, "Yo, we're going deeper." Not only are we are we going to become foreign nationals, we're going to create our own nation. Mm -hmm. We're going to have applicants to even like. There's a process to even become part of the nation. He mm -hmm. said, "Then then we got our own currency." Then I was like, "Own oh, currency?" I was like, "I'm executing this ASAP." Then you said, "I got our own language." I said, "Wait." And then he was like, I got the, I got my own passport and my own ID. I said, we need him on the podcast. Ain't no way. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everything is a necessity, you know, because we're talking about the U.S. dollar. Yep. Right? right. Yep. You know, like I said, it's all about positioning yourself for the future. Find ways to give that value. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? But ultimately, the whole objective is, like I say, just finding ways people to transact you within your own monetary units. You know, so okay, now I set up the whole play like that. I said, okay, oh, we we have the marketplace now. Okay, cool. All right, so now we can't just have a coin. Just have a coin. You know, uh, we have to have every. We have to have our own everything. We're gonna have. A, it's gonna turn into a trading platform soon. Yeah, you know, I saw uh, it on Trading View. Yeah, so it's like. You know, but first, first and foremost, it's a currency exchange because what happens anytime you go to another country? You have they to exchange, exchange currency. your currency you to their the, currency. Oh, you're talking to Forex traders right here, so we already know. You go to the currency exchange. And see, this is the reason why when we got into trading, and my, like I said, my dad is a retired stock trader. Um, he was vice president of Persian in, DC, uh, in Chicago. And what was so interesting about that whole dynamics and for us to start trading it was like when we created the Mansa Musa group, it was like, guys, we got to start investing in the equipment for that. Also, mm -hmm. it's not just, uh, you know, the coin itself. What companies are creating the machines to, to create the boxes? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you know, copper is going to, well, copper is, is high anyway. Mm -hmm. We need to be thinking about, because um, that's the conductor. Mm -hmm. We need to be investing in copper. You know, so all of these things. So what made me was it was something that had transpired. And I said, we really need to take this seriously because we're going to be A out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I met Akon, that was the eye opening. Like, okay, so you're creating your own currency? He probably on the same wavelength. But he, he is, he's way ahead mm -hmm. because you can't even communicate and transact in that city over the next because they, they're building it now. It's eight more years mm -hmm. and, unless you're using their currency. Yeah, that's how you got to do it. So you're going to have to exchange. So that's how we're feeling about the fanpreneurs. We're mm -hmm. upset because somebody got the family coin because we were going for, for that name. So now people are going to be able to buy that coin and be able to transact with us. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what you're saying mm -hmm. that you would do because that's what's going to happen. It's like everybody's going to have their own little coin. You have to transact. Be because at, basically at the end of the day, what they're doing is while they're trying to figure everything out, this is the room for opportunity. So when they say like history repeats itself, so we got to understand where we're at right now. We're back in 1933. Wow. We're in the redemption movement again mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Man versus machine. Yeah, it, like I said, it just it's, they're not forcing us to, you know, taking our gold and silver away. You know, we're selling it, you know, we're buying it again. But the world is it's not that it's not going to be we're not look, we're not going to get back to the to the point of like, OK, the dollar bill is going to is going to die. And then we're going to be going to Walmart with, with bundles of gold and stuff. It's not going to do it's no, not, it's, it's uh, not going to be not. like that. Of course not. You know, we're going back to the gold standard. No, we're not. Not in that aspect. You know. No, no, no. Not nah. in that aspect. No. Nah. If anything, it'll just make gold more valuable. Mm -hmm. Right? You may have some gold, but you're not going to really depend it, it, on because, gold in that, in that regard. Yeah, because that form of money is not intended to transact into Correct. This. It's not like dollar transactions. Yeah. Right. It's not it's like just when value they just not transactions. For not, not for public transactions. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just value yeah. transactions. It's... it's if anything, it just, it's just there to increase your net worth. Yeah, yeah. That's really all yeah. the gold and the silver and the copper is there for is to increase <laughs> the net worth. Now, if we're doing private, uh, you know, yeah. private commerce and business, stuff like that. When they accept gold. Or bonds that are backed by gold and silver. Correct, correct. Mm. With the contracts and everything, yeah. Yes, because now we're building instruments of equity mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of fiat. Because mm -hmm. we can all print up our own bonds and stuff like that and just put a dollar amount but that has no true weight to it unless it has something that's backed by that's actual... A thousand percent. Yeah, you see? A it's, thousand It's percent. interesting you said because that's what my father kept saying about the Bitcoin's not backed by anything. I said, Dad, I'm trying to tell you it's going to change the world. No matter... I said, whether it's that or the technology behind it is going to change how we do commerce from this moment on. So when you say original instrument and contract, can you explain to everyone 
how that is in use. Because what do you mean original instrument or contract? Well, folks don't understand that. So can you put it in plain English for us dum dums? You mean as far as like the first contract we've ever uh, encountered? Correct. Oh uh, yeah, so that that's the birth certificate application. You know, that's the, the birth first, certificate. The birth certificate application. The, the, now the, I know, but well, what yeah. you mean the birth certificate? It's that little piece of paper that the doctor came in with the, on the <laughs> clipboard, probably when you was about to push him out, mm-hmm. and then he's like, "Hey, you do, we need you to sign here." Let me let me tell you the story. What happened with my son? The mother of my son, right? <laughs> She's already trained on certain aspects as far as the contracts and stuff like this. Right? Okay. So if you better not sign your name without that UCC one dash three oh eight, all right? You know, so we didn't have no complaints there. So when, when they first gave us the original, uh, you know, contract application, you know, we had signed off and stuff like that. We was both clear headed at the point right there. So she, she she wasn't up under amnesia at that point. But then right when she gets to like hours later, when she's about to go into labor and stuff like that, uh, you know, the doctor comes in with another clipboard that has, you know, I think where they put the baby feed and fingerprints and stuff like that's that. That's another aspect as well. Of, of identification, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so they waited right until his head was coming out until they came. She came with the clipboard and, and the ink pad and she, she took her hand for her, inked it and put it on the boom, boom, boom. That's her. Now that's her. That's her signature. She, that's the final signature she need, right? So now, as soon as she did that, why everybody was like, oh, like, he just came out. They're like, oh, my God, he's so cute. He's so cute. I'm over here with the clipboard, like, with my digital, with my phone scan, like, click, 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 click. first in line, first in time. So as soon as we got to the hospital the next day, I went, and fa- I went and claimed everything. Everything, even the wristband she had on her wrist and the wristband he had on his, you know what I'm saying? What do you mean claim? I found it on the record as, as, my, as my property. Got gotcha. you. Declaration of ownership. Got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as the uh, because because we end up getting birth certificates. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's not about it's all about knowing how to control the contract. Got gotcha. First in line, first time. You see mm-hmm. what I mean? So as soon as the birth certificate was, was completed within that seven day period, I've already had it authenticated. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like securing their, their public side and while I'm creating their, their private side. You see what I mean? So. Hey, we can exist in both worlds if we know how to control and navigate. You see what I mean? And that's what we want people to understand. That's what people are scared of. They're scared to do that. Why are people scared to do that? People feel what they don't understand. That's facts. You know? So so that's what it's all about. So if not, you know, okay, we have the private home births and whatever, if you want to do yeah, that. Yeah, the doula, the midwives. Yeah, but, you know, if you control the aspect of life, you have to control the aspect of death as well. You know, but the, so the problem is we gave them control over the gateway of, of life and the gateway of death, which is our birthing process and the process of our transition. You know, we have to be we have to manage our own birthing, our own birth records, our own transitions of certificates. So how does one get their privacy back? How does one get themselves out of that type of situation? Because a lot of people don't want to be, but they don't understand or know or how to even go about it. So what's the first step a person should do? You have to be tapped into some form of network, community, or organization. Well, we are, you know, a tribe, you know, right. which uh, we have a culture that does certain things a certain way. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's what makes it difficult because usually nobody that, that we're around is even, is with, is with that. You That's see what true. I mean? Correct. So it's true. like, what, what, who do I call for this? You see what I mean? So lack of access to human resources or, you know, just a network of, you know, to know how to, what to, when to, or, you know, proper preparation. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. How do I even pre- prepare for that mentally and physically? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's just a lot of things that we have to do. But once we change that, all it takes is one one family unit to kind of do that. You know what I'm saying? And then you just clone that model, you know, that family model. You know, because I think like, you know, we should be doing things like instead of sending our people to their grave sites, we need to have our own private family burial land trust, right? Mm. Which is going to have give significant value and added protection to your land and the assets that's on top of the land and to turn that ground that the, that the uh, property is on into sacred territory now. Now we're going to cemetery law. So right. cemetery law has a lot of control over what's going on in the public side of commerce and stuff like that because everything was kind of born dead. Okay, so you since you brought that up, because that's what Trump did with his ex-wife because mm-hmm. he buried her on his land. Mm-hmm. Is cemetery law in this book? It should be. 
It should be. Okay, well, it wait a minute. Be. Because I forgot to mention this, guys, in the beginning. This man has written two important books. The first one is Trustology, Understanding Trust and How It Applies to You. I've already read half that book, bro. Oh, really? <laughs> it's a wrap, bro. You must know and this, <laughs> Like, seriously. And the second one is The Superior Law of Contracts, Understanding Contract Law and How It Applies to You, Your Business, and Your Relationships. On Amazon, you can find his books and on his store. So you guys need to get these two books. And he has. He's read half. I read like the first 12 pages because he took it back from me. Okay. I okay. got I got, I got to get a, a quick overview on that. What, what you, so what you thinking so far? Bro, that thing was fire. We I didn't know how many. Today. Look, I learned. Where do I even start? Okay. What well, we <laughs> talked about yesterday on, um, on our call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one, you know how they say that there's two types of trust. First of all, have you read other trust books? Yes. Okay. Yes. The passing of the book. What is it? Consis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it talks that, about express that, trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can never remember that name. Mm-hmm. The the wise. Yeah. 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 yeah the wise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There was another uh, family trust, mm-hmm. and there was another book I can't remember. But that book was so simple. I would say if you're looking for a book to kind of get the overview, because you give like the overview of like a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, there I would probably read some books that like Family Trust is still a good book to read Mm -hmm. if you needed to go more in depth. Mm -hmm. But like if you're needing to just understand trust, asset protection in one place, that book is. I love it. But one, I didn't even know that there was different types. So they, you know how they say there's two types of trust, irrevocable trust Mm -hmm. and revocable trust. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And of course, that's like the type. But really, it's. Further than that, there's like personal trust, organizational trust, yes. societal trust. I never even heard of those before. That's mm-hmm. the types. Well, of trust. that's what I was telling you. That was in, when I created the presentation on trust. I was like, there's more than just those trusts. It depends on what trust it is. What I definitely like, and I did skim it, was will versus trust. Because mm-hmm. everyone thinks if you don't have a trust, that you're going to be okay if you have a will, mm-hmm. and that doesn't 100% protect you. At you, all. No. But that's what they want you to think mm-hmm. that it's going to protect you, and it doesn't because it's going to go to probate court no matter what. Because people always say, Which one should I get, a will or a trust? Asking God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like you know, I don't know. Should, like, sh- should, I, should I breathe or, or not? <laughs> you know, like, 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 if I drink water, do, do I have to intake air as well? Right. You know, do I breathe out my nose or out my mouth? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, should, should I put both my left and my right foot? Sure. You know? Exactly. You might want to if you want to have right. a balance. You know, if you want to, you, you want to work you know, well together. No, but it's so important. I feel like, yeah, just a just a second, what you said, Mami. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you. That book is fire. Like, the book is like really really good it Mm. gives a person a great overview if they want to understand you put it in a simpler term Mm -hmm. like i said i didn't get a chance to finish all of it i'm just glad i got my own because we were really fighting over the book like Mm -hmm. on some real talk (laughs) okay i was like can i have it now he's like no mom i'm reading it i'm like but i want to read it too that was the primary goal is to make the most comprehensive as possible it is the most comprehensive for sure i still would suggest people to read those other books Mm -hmm. like if they want to get more in depth in some of the the different types of trust that exist because like you said there's hundreds of types Mm -hmm. of trust but like if they want to get more into it. But if you just need to know, if you need to go to court and be like, yo, what type of trust do you have? Mm-hmm. And they state, you could just state the trust and yeah. what it means. Like that would, your book is is pretty spot on. Now, contracts on the other end, this is where I'm going to get really excited because I'm no, on that no, that's, right that's my, there. No, that's, that's me. That's me. Look, I'm no, going to get all into no. it. You stay on the trust side, <laughs> I'm on the contract side. I still, look, trust, you still got to know uh, you contracts to no trust. trust. Yeah. I'll stay you know on the contract. Saying? Look, you can teach it, but okay. I'm gonna at least know what I'm talking about. I'm so <laughs> excited that you gave me this book on on the uh, contracts because, man, when we were dealing with our house, like we're still dealing with it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because we were part of the mortgage fraud, mm-hmm. all right, where they separated the note from the mortgage, mm-hmm. the deed from the um, mm-hmm. mortgage, and so it's like we've only paid our mortgage for a little over three years in the 20 years that we've been here. Mm -hmm. So whatever I was doing was sticking, Mm -hmm. right? It was sticking. And I'm like, because I'm sitting in all this, because I'm learning all of this from everybody else. But I do need to get a forensic audit done Mm -hmm. because it has transferred so many times. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you, and I'm like, where's the original instrument? (laughs) And so what they do is they just keep sending me copies. I said, Mm -hmm. well, where's the West signature? 
Where's this? And they refuse to send it to me. Yeah. And so I want to know how does someone get a forensic audit for those who were dealing with this mortgage fraud and still dealing with it today? If you want to kind of push a particular organization or company to kind of provide you with certain information or uh, in relation to your contract, one of my top shelf books is The Secret Banker's Manual. You guys never heard of it? No. Oh, no. The Secret Banker's Manual, because all this stuff is banking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. So you can't find like the original book or whatever like that. So you got like scanned in PDFs and stuff like that. Wow. So what I did was uh, I paid uh, you know one of my assistants to uh, type all the contracts because they provide you with all the contracts to issue out for certain situations. So one mm-hmm. one in particular that we use for, for uh, a mortgage issue foreclosure was uh, demand for full disclosure, and we send that in. They sent us everything. They send you stuff we didn't even ask them for. We did that too. One of my brothers for you know like a fifty thousand um, dollar vehicle purchase, like a party bus or something like that. They sent everything that we was aware of, plus the original UCC found they did on the car. I'm like, oh wow! I say, I say, oh, th- and so this is the first time ever in history, and last time I've ever seen. What people got to understand is a m- majority of these companies are operating in a fraud type of capacity mm-hmm. they're, they're they're pretending to be the secure parties and stuff like that's why that suits are so important because that's all they were doing this company was the real deal let me tell you what's interesting <laughs> when you said that so when we do our processing we use stripe right mm-hmm. and stripe will give you capital right oh yeah and they have the, they, the ucc section in there and so <laughs> I know, that's if what you don't what pay doing. them back yeah. they say I will file a UCC on you, and, a Uniform Commercial Code, and they tell one, you. on you if we do not get our money back. I was like, shut your face. Mm-hmm. So now within our company, when we're doing business and people have to pay us, we let them know when they sign their agreement. If you don't pay us in full, we will file a UCC filing on you. Mm-hmm. Now, now you have to find a way to the, the collateral that Stripe uses, of course, is your personal information. That's why they take your social security number and stuff like that. So to make sure that stuff can ping on your credit uh, when things go, if things go bad. But yeah, you know, put in that uh, demand notice for full disclosure. You know, so we did that and, and uh, it knocked out the loan servicer. So basically the loan servicer, uh, no, no, the mortgage company sent that. Then the loan servicer tried to send a, uh, you know, like a demand to move in 30 days or pay the remaining balance of $500,000. You know what I'm saying? So then we sent in simple, like, because no matter how, sc- the, like, if the average person would have looked at this notice, like, this is scary. Like, you know what I'm saying? You have 30 days to pay 500000 or you need to get out, right? Mm. So it's like 10-page letter, you know? I'm like, okay. But I'm looking at the letter, and I'm like, it looks scary, but I know... I know what I'm looking like. It still feels like the, a traditional, you know... Uh, Debt collection. Letter, yeah, from a third party. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Because it's coming from their attorney. Yeah, it's like... Well, this is, the, uh, this is from the loan servicing company. Okay, right? okay. So I'm looking at them like... It still says... It still gives you the 30-day disclaimer at the bottom. I say, send this in. You know what I'm saying? Show sure enough, 30 days come back around. Remember, at, at, so at this point, the, the original mortgage company lock this person out of her online account to even pay her bill, right? And when she calls, they said they cannot speak to her to contact blah, 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 mm-hmm. right? All of a sudden, she gets a new welcome letter in the mail from the original mortgage company and telling her, please don't send the money there anymore. Send it to us, right? So what, hold on. So the, the debt, you know, so the, the debt, you know, Originally started for the mortgage company, and then they automatically transfer it to a. So this this is a normal process now when you go through the, through the mortgage. It starts here. You go through the mortgage company, then they transfer it for the debt to this particular company to service the loan. Correct. But you got, we got to understand when that happens. That's when the debt was paid, right? But we go into contract automatically with this third party because we're thinking like, hey, they all you know, it's all the same, you know. So right then and there it was paid. So, so what happens when they try to... And the tax right off. Yeah. When they try to front the move like that with the demand and we shoot them with the validation and after we demanded the full disclosure, you know, we knocked them out the box now. 
we knock the third party out the box, then they have no other option but to pass it right back in or to another third party, but they pass it back to the original party. And that they whole thing was to, to come back at her as if nothing ever happened. They would call her every single day, multiple times. You know what I'm saying? By email, text. I'm talking about everything. You know what I'm saying? But they're saying that there's an investment company. I'll say in my uh, my case, mine was countrywide. You know, countrywide was messing everybody up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then they transferred it over to Bank of America. Then they transferred it over to Mr. Cooper. Which Bank of America is going through a mortgage thing now. And then mm-hmm. they transferred it over to some company called Celine. Mm-hmm. And they're servicers. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're not the original creditor. Mm-hmm. They're not the one that I filed an original instrument with. Right. Okay. So how are you able to collect if you're not the original and I didn't sign my name with you? I, I just think, like I said, that was my first mortgage issue that I, that I assist somebody with. Uh-huh. But uh, even up under those conditions of not really having no time, you know, and just yeah, going off less the, than 30 days. But the problem is, is that... She wanted to keep fighting. She wanted to go uh, sue now. Mm-hmm. The whole problem was that basically she had the mortgage for two years. She's never missed a payment, right? So they still try to put up on a foreclosure because they claim there was a breach in the contract based on the documentation that she used to acquire the mortgage, right? So that means they did a, a random audit, of, which is weird and ironic for somebody that's paying you every month mm-hmm. on time, right? And so I'm like, I'm trying to make this make sense or whatever, so only thing that can make this make sense is the fact that there's a clause inside of the, uh, the mortgage agreement that says we have, you have, up, we have up to two years to X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, meaning we have the right to go back in and blah, 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 blah. Because in a r- regular sense, their job during the underwriting process to determine whether something is valid, invalid, fraud, or whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever, before you grant them the mortgage uh, loan. You see what mm-hmm. I mean? So the only thing, the only reason that will make that make sense is if it was an inside finesse, you know, in relation from either, the, you know, the banks, the mortgage company, and the attorneys, right? Because think about it. If you move into these, you know, these brand new houses, into this brand new neighborhood and stuff like that, this is in Texas, and, uh, you know, half a million dollar house, right? So they know when a person first moves into the house, you've been there two years. What have you done in two years? You put money into it. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Equity. Mm-hmm. Got schools now that's been built. In the district, right. So, so now you hope you can find some type of issue inside of the contract so you can put a breach of contract in. So now you can take the house back and the equity and resell it again. It's genius. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because if somebody's paying you every month, you rent you you sell me your house, I'm paying you give me the loan though. I'm paying you every month. You know, on time. Why are you going back into the contract trying to, you know, why I'm paying you every month. Unless but the loan is already paid for. We, see, we ain't even gotten to that aspect of it. It's like they double sharking. Correct. The loan is paid Dude. for the day you sign your name. Yeah, but what people gotta do is like once reserve their rights to the net that mortgage contract for one, you once you get that original deed in your hands, mm-hmm. you need to immediately authenticate it and draft up a declaration of ownership and put that on the record. Y'all hear that? I wish I would have had this information at the time when I purchased my own. You need to wrap the whole contract, the whole, and especially that deed and put it on the record in the gate and solidify and reserve your rights within that contract. And then as soon as you get that first notice from that third party, what's the name? You hit them, you know, knock them at the park, you know, or if, if they ever try to try you, you always in position to defend yourself. You know, the problem is most people don't be in a position to defend themselves, you know, because a lot of these things they didn't do. Right. So, you we're know. not saying not pay what you, you know, what you owe. You know, what we're saying is you do have other rights. Yeah. You know, and that's people like, oh, you're, you get, you get, you're just trying to get out of it. No, mine was fraud. Straight mm-hmm. up fraud. You know, they took advantage of us. And so evidently whatever I sent in was sticking because ain't no way they're going to let you stay in a house for, for seven, what, what, 16 years without paying. Mm-hmm. So there was something that I gave them that's kind of scaring them, but then they try to try me every time. Oh, we're getting ready to foreclose. It's contracts. It's all about the contracts and, and time. It's all about time too. You know, uh, yeah, I got, got several situations with that, you know, um, you know, vehicles, cars, I mean, uh, uh, houses, you know, like I'm talking about big stuff. Like, uh, I had, had a buddy that had a, like a $3 million home and, uh, you know, but he, he was one of the guys that was doing the 1099 process, and he ended up getting a $3 million check, right? 
And uh, no, really, yeah, yeah. And then, no, that's the small check. The big check he got was seventy million. Why? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Why? I held. I, I got a picture of the check. You know what I'm saying? How? I yeah, mean, that was his thing. You know. So, uh, so when it finally came, can't back, say that in public. That's it, what that it, is. Yeah, <laughs> it came. It came. It came back on him a couple, a few years later. That's when I kind of we kind of first met. You know, and then he kind of wired some money overseas here, did this, did that. He probably got and, an international uh, trust somewhere in for yeah, that. Yeah, but he still did it with his government name. Mm. You see what I mean? Basically, they came back for the assets. Mm -hmm. You know, now he did something right because they didn't try to come back for his body as well. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For that particular uh, situation. Uh, that's how I knew he did He did do something right, mm -hmm. but it's also something he was missing as well. But all I'm going to say is, like, uh, yeah, if I get $3 million check, Worst case scenario, you know, if you come back three years later, I'm at least be able to give you your three million. But I probably didn't flip the three million to ten. Right, million. exactly. You see what I mean? You can have Absolutely. that money back. I'm Here not, you go. I'm not gonna be so naive and cocky to the point where you always have to have worst case scenario protocol in place, you know. But he was just like, yeah, yes, brother. We're just yeah. We're. So if somebody gave you three million <laughs> right now and you had to flip the three million in a year. Or a month, what would you do? Right off the top of my head, I would probably take about you know twenty to a hundred of the uh, the business trust I already have set up, sitting on the shelf. Run out the business credit, uh, unlimited lines of credit. You know, to, that's what to, I was thinking in my head you know, too. On each business, uh, you know, I would. Uh, I mean, that, that's all I would need to do. That's you all I would saying? do too. That's all I would need uh, there to was do. nothing else that I was thinking in my head. That's all I need. It's do. just deposit into a bank account, go into a bank, and then request more money. Yeah, and and then once I got the rest of the capital, put it put, put it the money the back, and then ask them for a line of credit. Exactly. That's All right. It. So I have a question then. So since people are sitting up here dealing, like say someone has, they're maxed out on their credit cards. What advice would you give them? It depends on if it's already damaged in the credit. No, it's not damaged to credit at all. They just maxed out. I don't know. It really depends. I mean, if it, if it's damaged to credit, I would say just focus on the credit. Or, I mean, sometimes it depends on the person's financial situation. You might just need to burn the bridge, you know? Okay. Just, just, just get rid of them, you know? Start That's over. What, That's what I told you. Um, let, let, let me tell you a story about uh, a bank. I ain't going to say the name because I want to I do business with them again. <laughs> 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 but they're a credit union, and they're federal. Right. So everybody loves them. Correct. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, Everyone know. loves this. So, uh, you know, this is some years ago, and, uh, you know, I, I just needed the money, you know? So I had like maybe, let's say, five grand. Now, at this time, personal credit was, wasn't nothing, none of that stuff, you mm -hmm. know? I was able to get that five grand off of uh, like a 580 score, you know? And it was like crazy. I'm like, nobody else qualified me for nothing. So, Got the five grand, uh, you know, still encompassing at certain levels of business, trying to figure it out, you know, money gone, you know. Um, so basically, yeah, emergency situation came up, had to run it up, you know. And um, it basically went delinquent maybe to like 20000 or something like that. And so I, I was forced to undergo an administrative process to kind of deal with the situation. So... I still have the letter. They ended up, they said, you know, because what they need to know about this particular bank, everything they do is in-house. So you're not getting no third-party letters from them. Right. Mm. That's they true. Don't, they don't sell their debt for some reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they do not sell the debt. They do everything in-house. So, okay, cool. All right. So, but whatever I did at the time, I stood on it and um, they ended up giving me a letter in the mail that said, okay, they still sell the friendly letter too. You know, and then it was like, okay, if you agree to pay zero dollars and zero cents for the next 36 months, we'll, you know. Shut your mouth. <laughs> zero dollars. Zero dollars and zero cents. So I sent them a check every month for zero dollars and zero cents. And we was cool. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Did Bruh, hear that? I, they probably gonna have to hear, listen to that back Did again. Did y'all hear that? I said he was gonna be dropping some gems, okay? I said he was going to be dropped. That, that's, that's crazy. And I got some questions. Okay. Based on the information you just said. All right. Now, we were talking about gold earlier. And we were talking about how, you, what, what would they do with their money? You would put in a digital currency or something that has, that's based on value, right? Mm -hmm. 
How do you feel about life insurance? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, part of my brain freeze. Yeah, that definitely would have been a part of the uh, the equation. You know, uh, like I would have just been building, uh, fueling the you know uh, a multitude of different trust structures. You see what I mean? Uh, because no matter look, no matter where the world goes, as far as currency, what type of currency, which one's gonna be dead or alive, it's two things that's gonna still be here: debt and credit. Yep. You see what I mean? So the way I look at credit, especially business credit, you know, because if I give you $50,000 in business credit today, right, a brand new line of credit, right, mm -hmm. you know, you would think, oh, that's a good thing. Yeah, depending on how you look at it, but you're actually 50000 in debt at this point, mm -hmm. right? Even though you should be able to leverage the debt to be able to, you know, whatever. Yep. But we still have to understand that's debt. Now, just on the, like on the trade line aspect, fifty thousand dollars, a brand new uh, fifty thousand dollar line of credit that just started today, it's going to impact your credit on a positive way. But the value of the fifty thousand dollars is not going to be at its max until you allow time to accumulate history, mm -hmm. which establishes the equity of mm -hmm. that fifty thousand dollars. Exactly. You know what I mean, exactly. so people try to you know get get lines of credit and they hit, and then they immediately try to go shopping and do this. I say you can, you you might get you're going to qualify for something, but you're not going to get the full value of, you know. The entire, yeah. yeah because yeah. you haven't allowed time, you know, especially if, if the business is less than two years old. Yeah. Especially if the business hasn't, hasn't you know, doesn't have any tax returns and blah, 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 all this mm -hmm. other stuff. These are these are components. So this goes back to the sovereign community of like, well, well why do we have to, we don't have to pay taxes. Well, look here, look, you decide what you want to do, how you want to do it. I'm not the guy to be like, we have tax exemptions and we use them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, for day-to-day -day purchases, stuff like that. But on the business side, I'm more so an aspect of um, being in a position to properly leverage the taxes. Mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. if I have, you have the appropriate CPA, you know, which is put one should be one of your best friends. You know, their job is to at the top because people when people think about taxes, they think about it towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. That we need to be there needs to be a tax plan that starts at the at the beginning of every year mm -hmm. every, of every season, right? One hundred percent. So so as a, 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 you know, as your as your CPA. As your as your as your competent and good CPA, I would be like, I need I need to be in tune with you and your business, right? So I would know uh, it's my job to identify, you know, when it comes across, you know, m you know, my desk or whatever, different things that you may qualify for as far as grants, yep. loans, line, whatever, whatever. Because first of all, I get paid every time you get paid. Facts, right? Because I'm gonna be doing a grant for you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I learned this, you know, when I when I came. I have a uh, a near close to Jewish type of CPA, right? <laughs> Not close to Jewish. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he was an expert in IRS law and codes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And he also knew somebody in the inside, you know. Um, but he was very expensive. You have to kind of know what you're doing at the same time because he English is not that great, and he kind of like you might you might miss something and sign up for something that kind of cost you because he's not. You got to kind of control him at the same time, so you got to be careful. You. you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. But I was I was able to do that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, of course now he probably didn't make you know I don't know in a, in a year he might make twenty thirty thousand from me, but you know probably didn't get me. You know. Man, Some decent cha maybe, decent change. Maybe three hundred thousand. Where does your cash flow come from? Like the like as a nation or like yourself get cash because books don't really pay like that. Let's be real. Oh no, books are for but that's just you say I get this yeah. stuff away. And that's when people go wrong. Everything is not meant to be, you know, you're not meant to get rich off of everything. You yeah. know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my, my financial return of what mm -hmm. I put in off it, and then everything else is gonna be actual. But that's mm -hmm. just residual. Right, mm -hmm. you know, I don't got to worry about it at this point. You press right. order, it's gonna ship to you. Done, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for my family, my friends, here, here you go, no problem. You know, like what am I? Hey, I'm not gonna be out. Credibility to you, but no, no disrespect to the people that that you know. That's what they do. They write books, and they. This is what the center of what they do. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? This is not the center of what I do. If I focus on this, I'm elapsing the bigger areas I have to conquer. Right. You know? So what is the center? Man, that center is huge. Uh, you know. I'm in a win-win situation, like with because look, if these are fifty dollars a piece, right? Mm -hmm. I use a company like like the big one of the biggest distribution companies at this point, uh, on especially online as far like Amazon to distribute my books. Mm -hmm. and, but and I and I removed, I positioned myself to acquire and retain my publishing rights, right? 
they get their little commissions or whatever like that, but the rights over the material and the publishing belongs to you. Belongs to me because I didn't accept their free ISBN numbers. Mm. Correct. So if I if I already created the publishing company, you tell own, just from opening I, the page. I did, I did my own ISBN I, mm-hmm. and I and I get my ISBN numbers in bulk. Mm-hmm. Just right. Because like, the there's a company. website. There's a website you that you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Just, well, Amazon got it from the same. It's, it's only one main site that you get your uh, you know, your true. ISBNs. Yeah. That's yeah. True. And that other companies are middlemans of the main mm-hmm. source of the ISBN numbers. And I didn't know that until I went through the process of publishing my book. And then when I'm going through the process of publishing my book, I'm like, wait a minute. You know, everything is a learning experience. I'm like, I'm like, it's, I'm like, oh my god, it's a whole another matrix but, inside the but booking, they get booking us, world. Right, it's a matrix within Most a matrix. Most people within signed up the regular train, got on the regular train because it was easy. It's free too. Right, yeah, it's like, super well, free. It's free. I'll do it. I mean, look, we wrote our books as well. You know, I made sure that barcode costs exactly. <clears throat> That's crazy to me. Okay. I can create our own barcodes. We sure can. I created my own barcode. <laughs> I didn't go through their barcode the when I did my book. The barcode, Why? Go. Why? But, but not, if you don't know to see, there's always a financial gain in ignorance. You know? It's ignorance tax. Just yeah. what they say. Ignorance, ignorance to the law. <laughs> ignorance to the law. So, okay. So I got another question for you. If somebody has messed up, you know, because I'm, like I said, I'm all about understanding the contracts and the laws and dealing with the credit portion because that's what our community really deals with. You know, the average is between a 580 and a 660. You know, they're on that semi-cusp. They are the high utilization or they didn't pay their credit cards because they didn't understand management. But you just said something earlier about they can chuck it, okay? So what about this adverse action? Like when credit cards lower your limits or things of that nature, what can a person do to get those limits back? Mm, well, uh, well, first, let me uh, let me let you guys know uh, the end game to these books is that remember the Malachi University is uh, launched in September. What is what do all schools have? Books. Textbooks. To be more these exact. are the tech. These are the general study textbooks. Mm-hmm. The contract law course. You did that. The trust. I'm right. I'm right. I'm just writing all the books for the institution. <laughs> you did that. I would have never thought about that. <laughs> so I'm scaling. I'm about to it. start. I'm about to start writing books. Yeah, we're for, about to go for, back to writing our books. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, That's man. smart. Wow. It, it's gonna. That's st- very smart. You I see? see what you put on the front. Yeah, and remember, it's still. I always do subliminal stuff to see if people catch it. You notice how my name is spelled. Correct. Oh, I peeped that. It's private. My and name you, is still private. And you did the four corner rule inside the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we mm-hmm. noticed that too. Mm-hmm. Right in here. I already peeped that. All yep. this. Yep. That was the first thing we noticed. Yeah, that was actually the first thing that I know. I was like, I said, I mean, look, look, look at this. <laughs> I said, look at oh, this what? man did right I here. He got See, that, that's how you know I was reading. I was like, oh, look at this man. Look. I said, well, read, read this. What is the first thing you see? She said, uh, words. <laughs> I was like, but no. I was like, brackets. <laughs> Contractual tactic, you know, when you writing things up as far as maintaining your protection as far as when jurisdictional assumption. Honestly, I don't care enough. I don't care a lot about that, to be honest with you, because just simply because everything, all the information that applies to me is private. So I do it sometimes by habit, you know, and this is actually a standard, you know, within my editing. You see what I mean? So a lot of stuff that I used to do, you know, like I don't really don't do anymore because it's irrelevant because all this is private. The publishing house is private. The publishing house of Malachi. My name, the author is the, is the trust. That's not my government name. You see what I mean? The address is private, you know? So Wait, repeat that? You said your author is what? It's under the trust. It's my trust. My name is the trust. I only operate in trust in the public. Your name is the trust? Yes. But the rule is when you're publishing, but I still wanted to make it even more private by while we're establishing the Malachi language, this is, this is another coding method that we use to decode our, our words. So this is in a particular type of text. Right, mm-hmm. that you can use. You can use your your Google Lens, and you, if you trace over it, it'll translate it back to Neapolis and League Malachi. I'm blown. I'm That's blown crazy. away. Don't I'm think... blown away right now. My, it, I'm like, did this shit just go over my you head? You see, you see how I felt when I was interviewing them last time. I was like, wait, hold up, hold up. The game for me the last time is when you trademark your image, your self image. 
She been talking about that ever since, man. I have. I uh, have. That, that's, yeah. That's, because uh, that was fire to me. The fact that, you know, with the, what resonated me when you said if the police officer pulls them over and it comes up within a database, you are in breach. They mm-hmm. are in breach. They're in trouble. You don't cop. Yeah. You infringed upon my. Oh, Lord. Look what that said. Mention a comment. No, no, no. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. Let me see. Napoleon's. Yes. So oh, it wow. changed it. Oh, that's fire. Hey, how you do that? Google Lens do, does a automatic does the language translation. Uh, so if it goes from whatever language is in to English. Wait, what language is that? Huh? What language is that? His language. Hey, <laughs> hold up now, hold up now. Now, now you know we gotta have our own language now. Right? Oh my God! We gonna you, have to have our well, own language now. you said that when the other no guy way. created, when we were lo- that reading. was this guy. No, but the other one that we were looking at, he created his language. That was him. I showed you his Instagram. He's no, the one I that it created was his inside language. of the other course that we had. No. Okay. No. So it was him. He was the one. That, he didn't talk about no language. He didn't talk about none of that. When I saw him say in an interview in a podcast, yeah, we create our own language. I said, let me pause and this did. and replay this again. He Hold came up. to me and said, there's this guy create, but I thought it was within that other nah, course. It was him. This guy. This <laughs> man right here said we create our own language. I said, okay, so let me let this me let me just get Black to that. Panther shit. Yeah, for sure. Let me let me. <laughs> ask you, what is all the things that you can create? You got currency, language. Like, what are all things people can create? University. Uh, I mean, look, when I show people certain things, the point of me showing is that we can create anything. Damn it, you see what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like as as once, it's like. The, the bigger question is, what can't we create? Right. right. So now it's like, okay, what do I want to create? Now, what is the most realistic way to actually get this done? You see what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, now the aspect of even like stuff like, you know, the language can really boggle the mind. How do you even, you know what I'm saying? Like the, you said, so I had to eliminate all that and just do it, you know? It's interesting because when my husband and I were dating, all he ever talked about is castles and universes and his own. You know, that's, he he had been saying that. You 10 know, years. No, no 15, oh, 15. 14, 14 years. He had been saying that. I want to create my own kingdom. I want to create. And I'm like, okay, okay, we can create our own kingdom. Because, again, translation is different. Mm-hmm. I could just be thinking he's talking about our kingdom within our home. No, he was talking about, no, I want to create our own unit. So when this metaverse and everything came out, he was like freaking out. So when we were watching Ready Player One, I looked at it from the aspect of cryptocurrency. He looked at it from the aspect of kingdom. it being right kingdom, a whole metaverse. Yeah. So we had different aspects of understanding, but yet and still we're still in alignment. I got chills. Okay. Like, oh my God. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just kind of crazy. Because it's like when people really realize what's going on, they are walking zombies. Yeah, let me tell you what they're doing. The, you know, I mean, look, first thing is, is that we got to remove things from our mind, per se, and uh, take it like more of a spiritual approach. It's like, you know, everything just means something. Like, even like my garage or whatever, right? I was watch, watching Billions and stuff, right? And I was, I was debating on, like, you know, like, what car I'm about to get, right? And I'm like, and then remember Axe bought. What, the beach house? No, nah, I remember Axe brought about Wendy, the uh, Maserati, black Maserati. Yes, 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 right? yes, 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 yes. I was, I he, was already looking for... It was for, for a gift, and yeah. then she didn't like it. He was like, but it's, well, nice but it's a car. Yeah, it was like, it's a car. Why, would you, why wouldn't you want it? But it she, she's so bougie. <laughs> but, but, she was but, like, nah. But, but, but think about this, though. You got to think about this, though. We're watching billions. Right? That's true. So their right. money... They're, but no, different. no, no, no. We're watching billions, right? So not only did... It, that was that car was significant, right? Yes. Because he was like, "But it's a nice car, mm-hmm. like far as value." Remember, right. This is a billionaire. Correct. Right? He Correct. bought her this particular Maserati. Mm-hmm. Once I seen that, I'm, I'm sitting up here. I'm working, and I was just see. I work while I, I'm not sitting there just tuning into the. That's how it. Yeah. So that's, we I'm understand. So, yeah, we're so, working while we yeah, look to watch it's, something. It's really, it's really feeding me. It's helping right. me get through the night. You know, I'm working late hours. You know, once I see, I say, I, I ordered it within ten days later. You see what I mean? Put they, they they dropped it off to me, you know, and I'm the same one. So because it's a particular type, you know, you know the ones that a lot of ones on the street. You ordered is the, the ones. same. Those, those are the ones that are like eighty thousand. No, yeah, you, you, but his was like I, 
Yeah, this, upper echelon. Th- this one is is one is one fifty and up. Yeah, for sure. Because it has the Ferrari engine. Exactly. It's the this Ferrari man, engine. <laughs> that's why it's valuable. It's not like a yeah, regular Maserati. Exactly. It's because it has the same values of Ferrari. Exactly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Exactly. It go to him watching something on the TV on the Netflix, and he gonna go buy the same vehicle. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's some is it even stuff. on Netflix now? Yeah. No, I think it's only no, on no. Apple TV, right? No, it's no, that's on, on Prime too. Prime, oh, it's on uh, Prime as well. Yeah. Okay, but but look, but before I did that, I had to create space. My my garage was a disaster. You see what I mean? It's like I still had, you know, just I should do a lot of Amazon shopping. So it's all these boxes. <laughs> Who don't? And then it just it just like you know what's going on. But so I'm like, you know, I'm like I had to create space. So I, you know, I, I paid some of the guys to come out, you know, clear the space. And then, because I can't have that without creating the space for it. Right, 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 right. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. so it could be as simple as, like, certain symbolic things as far as, you know, you know, like, me, me making me cleaning out my closet or me making sure I make my bed after I get up. You see what Absolutely. I mean? It's like... We were I'm real big on making the bed as soon as we get up. My husband and I, it's to the point now, it's it's like, because it's a jump start of your day. It's a mental thing. It is. Okay. Yeah. You you need to straighten your bed when you get up. You need to meditate when you get up. You, you need we to can't write clutter down. the mind. If you, Correct. If you clutter your your physical space, it can clutter your your mental space. Exactly. It's like I have a routine. I go in the kitchen, make sure everything is straight. Go to my office, make sure everything is clear, so I can start my day. You cannot work in a cluttered mind. If your space is cluttered, then your mind mm-hmm. is cluttered. Mm-hmm. Look, People don't understand that. They don't. You, they you don't. Know what? Can you pass me that trustology book real quick? Mean, this man put you, some sauce mean, in there that wait, I need to mean, ask. You mean my trust? Yeah, book? I just need to see it real quick. I'm gonna give it back. I already got one. I don't care about your book. <laughs> I want to ask him a question that was that blew my mind. This is the most part that blew my mind when I think about it. This man put the sample agreements in the book. I was actually getting ready to say that. Mm -hmm. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I got to ask. This is a very selfish question. (laughs) I'm just being very honest with you. These agreements, are they usable or are they not usable? Those are real life agreements. You you just a a man. Oh, my God. It's about to go down. down. (laughs) Let me me make sure. I looked at it because I was like, there's examples in here. There are trust agreements. I want you to understand something. <laughs> Black people don't do this. I know. <laughs> so, so they I don't share the understand. information. On, I just need thing. you to go. I had to be very it's transparent. About sharing the information. They're, I mean, they're very selfish with the information. Not, not so much as selfish. It's like everything you got to make a dollar. Got to make a dollar. Got to make a dollar. Got to make. You know, it's like okay, you bought the book here. The information's in the book. This is the thing. Whether you're gonna be, you know, a client or your own, you know. Do your own process or whatever like that. You still need to be competent to even be a client. You see what I mean? Because so, because I need you, you to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Right. So th- so trust is not one of those things you cannot. I, I can't even afford for you to be incompetent of it. You see what I mean? Mm. Right. So so this is gonna provide that. You know. And okay, here's here's some examples here. So now you know you have you can have more of a level of certainty of what type of trust you may need. Based upon your objectives. You see what I mean? It's like, well, I thought I needed this trust, but actually, this is the trust that I'm actually looking for instead. So you know the Constitution within the trust, right? Mm -hmm. Where would it go in this particular place? The Constitution within the trust? Correct. Because that's also... The U.S. Constitution? No, 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 no. The family Constitution. Oh, well, that's kind of sort of separate. You know, I don't know. You could put it in the trust as an amendment. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that so it would be more of an amendment type of deal. So it would be, ju- it would be this, and then the amendment would be the Constitution. Mm-hmm. So, but if you wanted it to be something different, how would it or work it, if it was something or different? Not. Well, not. I mean, no. It actually doesn't have to even be an amendment because it can be, it could be a part of... I don't want to call it, you know, just remove Constitution right. the title off and just right. put it in the body of the trust, you know? As right, it can as, be as, as labeled as, like if it's a like provisions, right? Or block, you know what I'm saying? Like that's just the body of the Western Act. That's what I was asking. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was asking. So for yeah. people who aren't aware of what I'm talking about, right? Like when I say the Constitution, so a lot of people are talking about like wills versus trusts, right? And so wills is more of something that that is going to make you go to probate, you go, you know, it's going to be public. Everybody, you know, think of uh, Jerry Springer, that whole situation. But the Constitution is like the will, but in the trust. Right. So it keeps it private. So I, I just wanted to ask because the um, I've seen so many trust agreements, mm-hmm. but none of them have the 
I'm, I'm just calling it the Constitution for words that we both understand. Mm -hmm. None of them have that in the trust. Because I've seen trust agreements that are like 9, 10 pages, 20 pages long. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what's the difference between, like, those long trust agreements than the sample agreements that are on there? It, it, it's all circumstantial. You see what I mean? I mean, Got honestly, you. look, the simpler the better. You know what I'm saying? I would He's very detailed. I would, well, if, oh, I I, well, this is the thing. If the details apply to you, okay, yeah. But if you got a mil <laughs> 50 pages that don't even apply to your situation, it can, yeah. be, it can be a Complex. conflict of interest. Right, for sure. You know, because you don't roast the clauses in there that... Yeah, right, that you don't know, apply to you. Nah, so no. Nah, and then it's creating it's, a it's restriction. Always been, it's always been... You always should be... Uh, and I think we should get a habit of start right now to own trust from hand, uh, from hand. You know what I'm saying? Right, me, right now, our wills. Let me ask you, did you see that situation with Jerry Springer? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it was actually ended up being a joke. No, I don't think that, that was, was not a joke. A joke. I that was real life. I thought they ended up saying that it was fake, but that there was the, this so was I, not no joke. I think I think they ended up saying that it was Are a you fake. Yeah, no. You ain't see that? I showed it to you. Nah. It was that, but if it was truly real, that was insane. Yeah. That was real. Yeah, that was not fake. So so, I could they contest that the two daughters? I mean, because that sucker was on video doing that. Uh, I mean, look, whatever that man wrote out, hey, they can't contest whatever he, he had in his law. Right. That was his. That's a word. And he verbally did yeah. a video. Yeah, he can't. I mean, it doesn't that, that's the whole point. It can't. It's not. It doesn't matter how people feel. You know, it's about what, what's on the paper. You know, black that's words the contract. on white paper. That's the contract. That's mm -hmm. the agreement. You know. Ooh, and when she called him a prick at the end. It was, was nothing because it was nothing. You said you could have the house. You guys can do whatever you want with the house and split it, sell it and split it. But the rest of my money is going to these my two other children. That was insane. That was no joke. That was not a joke. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to go back and check it because that some people were saying it was actually a hoax. But but the thing is, when I seen that, even though even though how crazy it is. It wasn't like no super. I wasn't super surprised because I mad Jerry Springer was in a wild, wild community. He really was. Yes, he was. For a long time, and and, and, uh, and mainly our community. Look, look black people loved. Jerry. I used to run home from fifth nah, grade for in school. real just to watch. Just to it. watch Jerry. I, I only supposed to be watching Jerry Springer. Every time. <laughs> so what makes me think it's real? Because he was. It was dealing in a sense with his own life. Mm -hmm. He had children by. Yeah. By a black woman. So he, I can see if he was really uh, naturally attracted to black women. Yes. You know? He did a lot of black women on the show. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. he was just like the other guy. Is this your baby? I can't remember. Ma Maury Povich. You know, so that, that was just insane. But look, we could be here all <laughs> day. Because when I say he's a wealth of knowledge... He's a wealth of knowledge. So we're going to have to bring him back, which we are. We're going to bring you at FAMCON, FAMCONEXPO.com, guys. He's cool. going to be one of our guest speakers. So if you want to learn more, get his books. Don't forget to go, get to, go to Amazon.com. Or you can see him in person at FAMCON Expo. You guys got to come out, um, FAMCONEXPO.com. So General Hell, yes. <laughs> Hellraiser, I'm Technically, blown. Technically, it's Hell Lord. Okay. Or is it Lord Hell? No, Lord, Lord Hell Razor. Razor. Hell Razor. It's like how they used to be back in the day. Like what made Hell you, the. What, what, you know what, what, what made you use that? Wait, I'm trying to figure this out. What made you use that name, Hell Razor? Uh, <laughs> like I say, uh, I don't know. I like doing things to kind of trigger people. You know what I'm saying? To think about a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? You're right. So it's like you know, I know if you first hear the word Hell, it automatically goes to the other word, right? Mm -hmm. You know, or or like Hellraiser from the movie. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But all it is is, is the hell is just some, is just a word that that's referencing like hell to uh, a you know, to the, the king. Hell to the king. That's it. That's it. That's all. You well, I mean? you know, our birthdays are on the same day. Yes, a April Fool's babies. Exactly. I know you got fooled, man. Yeah, yeah. Always, yeah. always. I always did it. It was always. The, I would say that was the highlight of my year. Mm -hmm. Fooling her was the highlight <laughs> of my year. <laughs> Man. No, it's it's crazy because I'm seeing all this Kendrick alignment. So, you know, when you the divinity and I'm just like, why do we have so much in common? Mm -hmm. So when I saw your birthday, I was like, that's why. 
Mm-hmm. So our minds are thinking the same way. And it's like once you're zoning and you see something, that's it. It's like I'm focused. I don't need to see anything else. I'm focused. OK, but no, I'm just I'm just excited about you guys. You know, you being here and just the fact that you came over. Not once. This man came twice. OK, so we're going to feed him. Well, he gonna gotcha. take it. He gonna take it with him, actually. You know, but we just we're just so grateful to you for your time and your your humbleness, just your honesty, your integrity, just your willing to help the community. You don't even have to. Appreciate you. You yeah. don't even have to. You have a whole community of two thousand people. That's incredible. The amount of people that you're helping and Impacting. continue. Right. The impact that you're doing. How does that make you feel? You know, got a lot of work to do, you know. Because the work is not done. No, nah, it's nowhere near done. The it will never be done, done, honestly. Nah, it's, it's like people ask me that question. That's the craziest question in the world to me. You know, it's like, like, so what do you think you, like, is going to be enough? Or just when you could just like, like what? You mean like what? Retire? It'll never be like, enough. Yeah, like, I'm like, what do you mean? This is life. I have to, I have to do double and triple work. I got to do things that, you know, my grandfather wasn't able to complete. You know, mm-hmm. I had to do things that my father wasn't able to complete. You see what I mean? I had to reestablish, I had to, had to re- remold and recreate our whole family structure. You know, then bring my parents back in, and, you know, and reprogram them to be able to, to aid and assist and reposition them. You see what I mean? So it's like, you know, you wake up one day and you see your, your mom and your father, your auntie, like, wait, like, I don't even know. When did y'all get here? You know, mm-hmm. you know, well, I'm so, I'm so much into it. I'm not even like, you see what I mean? I've never been like, you know. Hey mom, hey dad, can you guys come? You know, support and none of that. No, I just I, I didn't have time to look for support or the validation. You know, you know, some people want validation. Yeah, but that's the worst thing to do. You know, if you wait and look for validation, it's a lot of times it's not gonna come. It's not gonna get done. You know, people are gonna be there once you do apply to act. Well, first of all, the art of manifestation. You know, mm. first is the thought and the action. Then that's the manifestation. You know, so when I so when I think of something. You know, I have to immediately apply action. Like, if I, I could be driving, I, I'll pull over, write it down. Because the thing about that is, when you get a download out the blue, I swear it will fall it right w- out your head. It sure will. It really That's will. like when you have it those will dreams. It fall right out of your head. You have to hurry up and transfer that thought energy into the physical world by, by simply writing it down. It's you infinity. Know? Because you don't know when the opportunity of that coming back around to you again. You don't. It could be tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, or even 20 years from now. Of a thought. People really don't realize that the power of an idea, you know? And, and then the, the second you even just simply write writing the idea down, you just it's the art of manifestation. Of, so now, so ether. now that's the first look. That's the first brick right there of, the, of your whole empire, of your whole foundation. Now all is about boom, boom, boom. Okay, see what fits. See what you know. what I'm saying that's all I do. But my thing is this: is because I got so much stuff to do. You know, a lot of stuff I try to get done. Don't even ask me how long it took me to even make them books. It's not, it's not even humanly possible, right? And it, those books don't look like they've been thrown together, do they? No. It looked like you took your time. <clears throat> it looked like that book, like you read like 18 books to try to figure out what half that information is. Yeah. I don't spend more than a week on a book. I, I, can't, I can't afford to be working on a book for years. Actually, the first book I start, technically started was the Malachi Bible, not knowing it was going to be the Malachi Bible, right? This, was, this, had, this had to be 2000, maybe nine or eight. I hope I'm waiting to get the, the confirmation to other publishing now. But all this time for that book. But look how important this particular book is. Right. You know, the Malachi Bible is the foundation of everything we're doing. You see what I mean? And how does a Bible, so what is the structure of how to write a Bible? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to There's figure no out. There's no blueprint in it, you know? It's like, how do you want your family structure to be? Yeah, that's your Bible. It does, yeah. It's what you want inside that's of That's when it. we talk about your will, you know? What, what, what should I put in my will? I don't know. That's your will. You I mean, know? If it, I say, hey, hey, sis, hey, you can have this TV when I leave, but you got to get him the remote <laughs> <laughs> and give him the batteries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, some, and then so, so, he gets so, the plug. So, so guess what? That made no. So now you know, for the life of this situation, you get, you can enjoy this TV without without having him and him in some aspect because he got the remote 
and he got the battery. <laughs> so, so, so if I want to create a strategy to keep my family together, like, you know, funny example, but stuff like that, that's what your will is about, is about the specifications of what happens and when it happens and what happens with what. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And the order, or the stipulations of the, you can have this when you accomplish this or do X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. You see what I mean? So the trust is not involving all that. The trust is, is, is the, uh, you know, is the storage facility that's mm-hmm. holding the vehicles and stuff like that. The mm-hmm. will is the direction. Mm-hmm. They have to come together. So I'm not giving you a million dollars without no direction. You crazy? Exactly. I have always dreamt about the trust that I was going to leave for Marcus and Alex. And I said, yeah, they probably, uh, now that I saw Tariq, you see, I mean, he's controlling me eating death. I said, it, was, it will be controlling them, so to speak, not in a negative way, but just like, hey, every, at every aspect of your life, when you hit 30, when you hit 40, when you hit 50, when you hit 60, mm-hmm. certain things will be released to you. Only because we're wanting to, you know, to protect you and you don't go wilding out, you know? Yeah. So it's just crazy. So last question, last question. Your jewelry. Mm-hmm. What is the significance? I mean, I know. But what is the significance of the audience that's looking at these beautiful copper pieces with particular stones? What do they mean? Well, in general, so he has a name. His name is Hellcat. So he's, uh, he's a defender, the protection. You see what I mean? You know, he actually, I think I told you guys that, like I say, it's times that, you know, because I went out, we was out last night, so he was absorbing a lot of energy, a lot of energy, a lot of energy, a lot of energy, a lot of energy. You felt it? What? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's th- part of what I, you know, I guess my, my superpowers, I have to be able to absorb the energy of the people to really be able to feel what they need. You see what I mean? So, hey, like, every person is different, and it's like, that's why people don't understand, like, you know, if somebody asks you, can they spend a night over your house? You know, it's like, well, I'll just, I'll just be over here. I won't bother you. It don't matter if you're over there. You still in the, in my house. You're still in the, in the area. So it's like, if somebody calls you, it's like, if I pick up the phone, I'm allowing you access into my, into my space, into my Correct. world. So I still have to. Some people you have to prepare yourself to. You know, I sometimes I have to take a deep. All right, hello. You see what I mean? Because yeah, there is a, there's a young lady that's like that. I was like, yeah. no, she can't come over here anymore. Because the energy was just so off for me mm-hmm. that it made me uncomfortable in my own house. I was like, no. Yeah, you, you gotta have a happen. certain type of energy to, to be in, to be yeah. in my house, man. You know that that's just what it is. You know, but uh, but outside of that, this is a part of the Malachian culture, and you know, our, you know, our our clothing, you know, our colors, our natural colors are uh, black and gold mm-hmm. or black, white, and gold and stuff like that. So it just things we do you see what i mean okay. it's the things that we'll be known for you know in history you know so uh which is about history is a whole another thing so so uh i'll give you guys one, i'm gonna give you guys one more thing uh, okay as far as the guaranteed way to main to generate and, and establishing the uh, generational wealth for the family so um you know all of my kids right they have their own business trust right so like even my youngest that's that's four years old got a son and a daughter that's four so they both have business trust, you know, in their in their in their name, right? So um, now each business trust is a uh, beneficiary of a particular life insurance policy because they have policies on oh, everybody. Mm. Right? Of course. So now you know, and then why are you hitting? Her? Oh, I thought I was. <laughs> I thought I was hitting you because when you said that, I thought I was hitting you. Like, see, yes, yes. Yeah, so, so I have, so I, I put, so I have a budget where it's like, you know. Let's say every month or, you know, whenever, you know, maybe an annual budget where I'll invest a certain amount of, uh, you know, m- money or whatever to uh, increase their cre- the credit for the business trust. Now, fortunately, I don't have to spend a lot because we report directly to the, cre- to the credit bureaus. So um, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. No. Say what now? Yeah, we have contracts directly with the credit bureaus. So we, could re- we report directly to the business credit bureaus. See, that's why I'll be taking notes the whole time because I ain't finna play no games. Connection directly with the credit bureaus, yes. which we know are technically the, the consumer reporting agencies at the end of the day. Well, no, no, no. That's personal. So, not, so it's not the consumers. Consum- it's on the business consum- side. Consum- yeah, the business oh, side. Oh, so like side. you can talk about it, biz- like Experian Business and... Exactly. Oh, got you, Shut got you. Dun- Duns and, Duns and, Duns and Brad, Brad, yeah. Experian Business, Equifax Business. On the, on the international side, you have Credit Safe. 
You have yeah, that's the new yeah, one. Have, yeah, and, and Credit Safe actually feeds off uh, Experian. Actually, it feeds off Credit Safe. Mm-hmm. You have SBFE, Small Business Financial Exchange, yeah. which is mm-hmm. like a hub that they all kind of feed off of and stuff like that. So it's different ways on that. And uh, yeah, I have another surprise for you guys. You all have to wait to see that though. But uh, <gasps> but uh, but so so imagine like from from four years old to the point when they turn twenty one. Now they have uh, eighteen plus year. You know uh, history. You know, business. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? With 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 credit already built with with you know all them years of credit history as well. Because you can have a business but still no no credit history. Correct. You see what I mean? So now so now of course now as they're growing up, we're establishing their consumer credit at, at the same time. So now they they're gonna be crazy eight nine hundred scores by the time they eighteen twenty one. You know, with with already business credit cards, and I was uh, now look when I'm going to you know going shopping and stuff like that, I'm not using my credit cards. Of course not. I'm using theirs. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all I'm doing is I'm the trustee right now in the so-called black community. We have been subject to having to having no head starts. Our natural mm-hmm. starting point is zero. Zero credit uh, it's score. Negative zero. zero. Yeah, or, 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 <laughs> or we, we've acquired the debt of our parents because 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 we didn't put cable bills and and uh, light bills uh, and, in their name. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like God, or in our name. I have <laughs> never done that with my children. I have never violated their credit and used their credit. I have seen so many people do that. Yeah. It's sad because we don't we don't understand credit. Because we don't we're, understand right. contracts. We don't understand none of this stuff. I was taught, you know what I'm saying? You know, if you don't got the cash, you don't need it. You know what I'm saying? I get it, but it still was uh, not the best advice because I still I still misinterpreted it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but our community is cash rich, credit, credit poor, and mm-hmm. the highest consumers. Yeah, which means we're not rich at all. You know what I'm Correct. saying? We, we're the high. I think I think at this point, people they jack up the prices on you know, especially uh, leisure stuff like you know uh, detergent. Uh, well, detergent is twenty dollars. C- cigarettes, alcohol, toilet paper, yeah, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, I, they they raise the price on stuff, uh, name brand clothing, stuff like that, to determine like I want to see how I want to see how how we could raise these prices. I want to see how many, how many people still gonna buy this stuff. They don't still buy it, man. And they they're gonna find a way. It. That's because they need it. Like like they why, doing it on necessities. Why not put your, why not put put that money in as an investment towards your name, not the name of somebody else that's on your chest. Exactly, it's crazy. And look, because we're gonna be here. We we we're we gonna be here a whole another hour. This gonna have to be a part two. Let's go. Because part three. <laughs> yeah, part three. Yeah, uh, no, not part four. No, I'm just <laughs> guys. Any parts we need. We got Marcus. Take it away. All right, send look, us home. Send us look. home. One, get this man's books. It's too crazy to not have this man's but You are wilding if you don't have these books. All right. So look, hopefully y'all got some value. Like, comment, subscribe. Leave some reviews. What do you think based on the conversation? Would you get a trust? Would you get a will? Which one do you feel is important? Is it credit or cash? Comment below. Let us know your thoughts. And we'll see you in the next one.